power of enthusiasm. Okay. Uh, so you are being recorded now because when I stream, uh, this microphone picks up everything in the room. Uh, so just be careful what you say, all right? Not that you guys say in inappropriate things, but just sometimes things go that way when we're making jokes and stuff. Uh, today we are starting a unit called Linear Systems. And we're going to learn three ways of solving them. And today's way of solving them, or at least our first way of solving it, is going to be solving systems graphically. All right. You'll see if you... Oh, I don't have the right title up there. This is course outline. Usually I have the lesson title up in this corner. I've obviously made a mistake on this one. Today we are learning to define what a linear system is. You don't need to write this down. Define what a linear system is. Um, to talk about the possible solutions, because we're getting into a situation where we're going to try to find, you know, when you solve something, it's like find x, okay? We're actually today not going to find x, we're going to find x, y. We're going to find a coordinate. Think about that when we're talking about two lines crossing, that's not just a, a number, it's a coordinate, right? Uh, but there's different ways that lines can interact, and we're going to talk about those. And then we're going to try solving using graphing, and we're going to learn some of the concepts around solving that you must keep straight. So uh, how will you know you did well with today's lesson? Well, if you can tell me what a linear system is, that's good. That's a pretty straightforward one. If you can list the three possible solutions uh, to a linear system, that's good. If you can tell me uh, like what you look for to tell you which system solution you are in, because there's little clues that'll tell you which one is the which solution you're gonna get. And then if you can finally actually solve a system graphically, including a check. Uh, solving a linear system graphically is nothing without a check, okay? Solving a system graphically is only a guess. Once you've done the check, you know, okay? We'll talk about that more in a second. Okay, again, I apologize for the long note. So in grade nine, you would deal with linear uh, relations and linear equations. When we're dealing with a linear system, means we have more than one linear relation. And and typically, we'll have two of them in two variables. So we'll have, you know, x plus y equals 3, and 3x plus 2y equals negative 5, something like that. Okay, so two equations. Uh, of which, there are three different possibilities. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three different possibilities for solutions.
Leave a little space at the side, I'm going to draw a diagram. Okay? But uh, one single solution is our first case. It means that the line meets at one point. And we call it a unique solution. Can your phone be away for the last one, please? All right. So I'm just going to make a set of axes here, just as a sketch. And I'm going to have one line go like this, and one line go like this. And you can see it meets at a single point. Can you tell me something about the red line and the blue line, or the orange line and the blue line? Can you tell me what's the, different about them? Ian? The slope? The slope is different. So as long as M1 is not equal to M2, you're guaranteed to have this system, this solution. If the slope of one is not the same as the slope of another, they have to cross at one spot. Lines don't curve back, right? So this line isn't going to curve back and touch the orange line again. Nor is it going to curve up on this side and touch again. All right? So as long as the slope is different, they're going to touch at one spot. Okay? Can anybody tell me how they would touch at no spots? Benjamin, if they're parallel and something else. Parallel is one part that needs to happen, but something else also has to be true for them to meet at no spots. Max, I mean Benjamin, they have to have a different line of time. Exactly. So they have to be parallel, and they have to have a different line intercept. Okay? So this is our second case. No solution. This occurs when two lines are parallel and their y-intercepts are different. M1 is equal to M2, but B1 is not equal to B2. So M1 equals M2, but B1 is not equal to B2. Train tracks. Train tracks are good that they never meet. The train tracks match. Train and fall over. Ian. Uh, is this a note on your website? It will be, yeah. Okay. I think there, there's a version of it already, but the exact note I'm writing right now will go up onto on that, um, uh, my website. Okay. Perfect. And okay, so what's the other possibility? We've got one solution. We've got no solutions. What's the other possibility? I'm going to have Ian answer, and Abby, you're going to confirm if his answer is right. Is it uh, parallel lines with the same y and the same x? And then how many solutions are we going to have? 
Three? What do you think, Abby? So you're going to say parallel with the same y-intercept. How many solutions do you get if the lines are on top of each other? Pardon? Infinite number of solutions. Infinitely many solutions. This will occur when the lines are coincident. Okay? Which means they both lie on all the same points. Slopes and y-intercepts are the same. Sorry for the interruption. Yes. Thanks for attending. Yes, just a second. Thank you. Okay. Just give me a second to do attendance here. Are we ready to move on? All right. So you're going to need a piece of graph paper for the next part of this note, actually for the rest of the note. So if you want to get yourself out of graph paper and make yourself, maybe on the top half of the piece of paper, make yourself a nice set of axes. Okay. Uh, when making a set of axes uh, for graphing, uh, no, for sketching, it's different. For sketching, we don't really care about numbers and stuff. Just, just one second. But when graphing, you need to make a nice straight line. You need to put a, a, an arrow on the positive end and say it's Y. And then you have to put a positive end and say it's X for the horizontal. You have to show the origin by putting a zero in the middle. And you don't have to do all the scale that I've done on this graph down here. You just have to show four points and go one, one, minus one, minus one. Okay? As soon as you do that, the rest of the scale is implied. Okay? So you don't need to write all the numbers. Micah? Uh, do you have a more graph I have a little bit, yeah. Please try to get some. If you can come up and get it. Okay. In most of these equations, questions you need to pick the most appropriate appropriate method to graph each of these equations. The two methods are slope y-intercept form or two intercepts. Okay? I'm going to say, after we've done graphing, and you have a choice of how to do the solution, if it's given to you an intercept method, don't use graphing. Graphing is the worst way of solving. It's just it's garbage. It's not a good method. The algebraic methods are much better, and I would argue faster. You know, I just realized I was live streaming. Maybe I could go viral.
Maybe I should get some sponsors. You know, when I have breakfast in the morning out of my house, I like to go and very quickly and conveniently pick myself up some McDonald's, including a fresh McCafe coffee. McCafe coffee. I'm loving it. Do 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 do. Sponsors. Sponsors. Gotta keep the sponsors happy. Yeah. Maybe step us Yes. So we draw a graph. What else do you want? To oh. We're going to do the question together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted you to set up your your axes. Um, Brooklyn. Just to write the, the word. Uh, whatever. Whatever. Is that the biggest part of this lesson? No, it's just, it's conversational. I'm having a conversation with you. Okay. All right. So here's how we're going to do this. I have these two lines, y equals minus 2x plus 4, and y equals 4x plus 1. And we have to graph these. We have to graph these on the same set of axes. It only works if you do it on the same set of axes. All right, first things first. Before you graph either of them, you're going to give them numbers. And here's how you give an equation a number. It's almost like you're going to give it a variable. You're going to call it something. We're going to call this one, imaginatively, one with a circle around it. And this one, we're going to call it two with a circle around it. It's pretty imaginative. Now we're going to graph these. So minus 2x plus 4 means I start at 4. And what does the minus 2 tell me to do? Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And in this case, I do need to get a ruler out and do this properly. I'm going to cheat a little bit. But you need to get your ruler at this point. Okay. You're going to put arrows on both ends, and you have to identify which one of these two equations it is. So you're going to put a one with a circle around it. And now you know it's this equation that you've just graphed. Okay, now we have to graph the second one. So go ahead and graph it. I'll graph mine, see if we get the same thing. This is an opportunity for you to check and see if your understanding of graphing is amazing, which I'm sure it is. Yes, what about equation two with a circle? No, what is, what is, what is. It is four, y equals 4x four plus 1. That's right. You. You're welcome, sir.
know, when I'm standing at the front of the room waiting for students to graph their line y equals 4x plus 1, I like to do so while wearing my Vans. They're exceptionally comfortable and stylish. <laughs> also for a reasonable price at, m at most fine shoe stores. Where'd you get yours? Sport check. Uh, yeah. Sport check. When I buy my Vans, I like to go to Sport check. It's right at the edge of the mall, and I don't have to feel like COVID. I'm getting COVID while I'm shopping. <laughs> That's good. Way to stay positive. There you go. Hey, listen, this goes viral. I need lots of subscribers. You guys subscribe. I'm going to go viral. I'm going to pick up uh, maybe some sort of franchise sponsor. You should. Yeah, it's the light up. Sketchers. Sorry, just like a mic up. What did you say? Can you hear me? Just the light up. Sketchers are making a comeback. So I think you should invest in those. Light up Sketchers. Yeah, I agree. You can find those from Walmart. Yeah. Uh, sellers. I could. Oh my God, sellers. That is selling. That was the best store ever. Sellers. 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 Shall we continue with some mathematics? Brought to you today by the letters X and Y and the numbers 4 and 1. All right. Uh, did you get this line as your graph? Yes. What do you think the next thing we have to do to solve this system of linear equations? We've never solved the system. But I think it's pretty clear what the next thing you have to do. Simon. Um, like find where the two lines meet. Find where the two lines meet, exactly. You know, when I teach a Macaulay, I like to teach a Simon Macaulay. Simon Macaulay. He's awesome. Am I, are you sponsoring him? Uh, I don't think it has a fun to Oh! Simon Macaulay, he's okay. <laughs> All right. So, here we go. Um, you circle the point of intersection. And then you state your guess at the coordinates. It's only a guess. But what do we think the coordinates of this point are? What's your guess? One half for x and three for y? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that seems reasonable. Now, we are not done. We're not done. This is just a guess. In fact, I want you to write that down. This is just a guess. Yes, Max got it right. Okay? But we don't know for sure that you're right. Here's the problem with graphing. I can very easily make lines that are so difficult to graph. You know, what happens if I made something that was 100x minus 13.2? And I made this one negative 27.59821x plus 0.000001. It would be frustrating to graph it, right? So graphing is awful because it only gives you a guess, okay? But Max has guessed one half three. We will be able to prove that he's right. And that's the check that I was talking about. So I'm going to just zoom in here. All right. So I'm just going to do my check over here. Uh, but I would recommend doing your check underneath your graph, okay? So what you do is you write check. And then you're going to check equation one. You write LS, RS. Any guesses what LS and RS might stand for? Evelyn. Exactly. And then you simply write what's on the left side and you write what's on the uh, right side with no equal sign between them. The important thing with the check is there's no equal sign between them.
Now, what am I going to put in for y? What do you think? Clementine. Yes, why? Is exactly what it's called, point of intersection, and it's the, the y value of it. Perfect. So we're going to say 3 equals minus 2 times a half plus 4, because that's just the x coordinate. Now, I don't have any more math to do on the left side. Looks like I have some math to do on the right side. Minus 2 times a half is minus 1. Minus 1 plus 4 is 3. Was this a good thing that I calculated or a bad thing I calculated? <clears throat> Abby, what did you say? Nice. Good. Why is it good? <laughs> how, did, how did you know you're right? What about the left side and right side told me that it's right? Okay, let's, uh, Jenna. It's the same number on each side. So what you do is you put a check mark. All right, now here's the thing. This only proves that the point one half three is on line one. Does it say it's on line two? It has nothing to do with line two. So now I have to do the same thing for line two. So I write two down here, left side, right side, y, 4x plus 1, 3, 4 times a half plus 1, and that's 3. When graphing, you have to check both lines. When we do it algebraically, you only actually have to check one of the two, but you have to be careful which one to check. Okay? All right. So we know this is right because they both equal the same number. It doesn't matter what this number is. It could be 20 and 20. That's fine. As long as left side and right side are equal, that's all we care about. And these don't have to equal these. This just is for line one and this is for line two. Okay? But we do have to finish it off with a little bit of panache. And this is what we say. Since left side equals right side. So you know the therefore symbol? Since is just the therefore symbol upside down. Have you ever seen that before? No. Some people have, some people haven't. Since left side equals right side, therefore, one half comma three is the point of intersection of y equals negative uh, 2x plus 4 and y equals 4x plus 1, period. We're going to short form that uh, therefore statement as we go further on. You won't have to write this whole thing every single time. Angel. Um, on the right side for the second check, I'm kind of confused how... What is four halves? If I had... If oh. I, right? If I had four half pizzas and I put them together, how many total pizzas did I get? Two. So okay. two plus one is three. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. It's good. We're still knocking uh, dust off, right? Like... I don't expect, I expect maybe by Thursday, Friday, you start in, into your math rhythm, okay? Sadie. So on the test, when we, when we do like the math 
in our head. Do you, and you didn't show in the paper. Would you still take one? So what I would expect is that on, on your right side, left side check, you've written this, you've done a substitution, and you've shown the last step. I don't need to see like this step. That I don't need to see. Okay? So you can do that in your head. It's always, it's always a question of how much should you show on your work. Uh, here's the thing. Math is communication. It's like English. Okay? If I just said a few words, I only communicate a little bit. But if I, if I show more work, you're communicating more. Do you think, if I asked you this exact question on the test, that I cared that the point of intersection was one half three. I didn't care. I don't care. One half three is just a coordinate. It doesn't mean anything to me. When I'm marking it and you get the thing the answer one half three, that's great. But what I care about more is is your thinking correct? Do you know how to put together a solution in this for this particular type of problem? Do you understand why we have to do a check? Do you understand why we, you know, label our equations, things like that? Can you give me a good therefore statement? Are, is your thinking, are you able to explain it to me? If you cut out a line like this, minus one plus four, you've not changed your level of thinking that you're demonstrated, okay? But if you, do, if you just forget this whole thing and just say, left side equals right side without showing anything, then you've not really shown me your thinking. Okay, I don't know how you got that left side equals right side. All right, let's just do one more. You know, when I'm teaching math class. I like to teach math class on an M600 smart board from Smart Technologies. I find it's easy to use, robust, and flexible for my daily teaching demands. And if you want to send me any free products, Smart Technologies, I will be happy to do so. Do that. Please message me and I will send you my address. And I'll even send you like a GIF, like Congratulations, and I'll have like exploding rockets or something. Now they can't say no. They'll just have to sponsor me. They have it's to sponsor even, me. It's not even a decision. It's not even a decision, that's right. How does it feel to have a sponsor? <laughs> I don't know yet. Are you going live? Sorry, say that again? Are you going live? I'm live now, yeah. I'm alive. If you click on my on my video, you'll see that I'm just the video is just 14 seconds delayed to what I'm saying. So what I'm saying this second, people are hearing on the World Wide Web 14 seconds from now. That's so cool. Why is it what? Why is it delayed? Because uh, it has to load all the video information up. It needs to process it and then spit it out onto the YouTube stream. I'm impressed it's only 14 seconds, right? But that means if you're at home and you can't be here, please watch my live stream. I'll try to keep it locked. Like, I'll do one for every lesson, basically. And if you have a question, just text somebody who's in the classroom and I'll answer it and you can be at home and I'll be answering your question even though you're not there. Angel. How will we know when you're going live? If you subscribe to the channel, it give you a notification. So that's why you have to subscribe to my channel. All right, are we ready to do this? Uh, we're gonna, just because it's required in the curriculum, we're gonna graph this one by doing intercepts, okay? But intercepts when it's in this form is really simple. Again, I'm going to label this as equation one, and this is equation two. But I have to figure out what the x-intercept 
and the y-intercept is equal to. To find the x-intercept, what do I set y equal to? Zero. Right. So to find the x-intercept, this is what I do. I take my hand. I cover up the y. What is the x-intercept? Zero. No. Read it. Read what I haven't covered up. Uh, negative, seven. negative seven. Right. Whoops. I really didn't mean to cover up that y quite as much as I did. Negative seven. Now for a y-intercept, I set x equal to... For, for, a y, for an x-intercept, I set y equal to 0. For a y-intercept, I set x equal to 0. And all I do is I cover it up. So if negative y is equal to negative 7, then what is y equal to? 7. All right, so that's going to be my blue marker. I'll, I'll graph these in a second. Uh, now I'm going to do my x-intercept and y-intercept for equation 2. Again, x-intercept, cover up y. Because I want the x to still be around, right? So what is x going to be? Just as a fraction. It's not 2. What do I do to get the x by itself? Divide by 2. So it's just going to be minus 5 over 2. Okay? So the x-intercept is minus 5 over 2. The y-intercept is negative 5. Right? Because positive y equals negative 5. Okay, let me plot these points. Uh, just a second. Uh, all right. So the first one goes from negative 7 on x to positive 7 on y. The other one goes from negative 5 on y to negative 5 over 2 on x. Here's how you count negative 5 over 2. It means it's negative 5 halves, right? So you count by halves. The denominator tells you how much to increment each time. So watch. 1 half, 2 half, 3 half, 4 half, 5 half. I missed it by just a bit. 5 halves, right there. Okay? You see how that works? You count by halves. Let me do it again. I have to go negative direction, 5 halves. 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves, 5 halves. And I'm going to extend this. Like this. Now don't forget, you still have to put arrowheads on the end of both, and you have to give them numbers to show which one is which. What's the next step? Ian. Uh, find the point of intersection. Okay, what do you think it is? Uh, I was thinking uh, on the y-axis, it would be three point, or on mine it looks like 3.1, but on yours it looks like three. And then yeah. on the x-axis, it would be negative four. Yeah, and this is what the thing about graphing is. It's tough to make a perfectly accurate line, right? What do we want to guess for the y direction? Do we want to guess 3 or 3.1? Uh, on mine, it's a little bit higher, so I would say 3.1 for mine, but from where to I sit, looking at your screen, it looks like 3. What one would you like to use, though? Uh, 3. 3, three. okay. 
All right, so remember you write the coordinates x, y, so minus 4, 3. But this is just a guess. So let's do our left side, right side checks. Uh, check for equation one. Left side, right side. X minus Y and minus seven equals minus four minus three equals minus seven. That one worked. That means minus four, three is on the line, number one. Now we have to check for line number two. Natasha, you had a question? Okay. Two X plus Y minus five. Two times minus four plus 3, that's minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5. So now we know it's also on line 2. So it is the point of intersection. Since left side equals right side, therefore, the POI is minus 4, 3. Brooklyn, you seem like you have a question. I'm just looking at the, the time and the How I graphed the second one? Okay, so I knew I had a y-intercept of minus 5. So I plotted that point there. Oh. Okay. And then I have an x-intercept of minus 5 over 2, which is negative 2 and a half, which is there. And then I just connected the two points. You know what? It's very common for people to overthink questions. So when you are struggling, just try to think like in the simplest form, how can I answer this? In the absolute simplest way, how can I answer this? And you'll actually find that your math skill gets strengthened by being able to do that. Yes, Ian. Uh, so you said that when we had negative five over negative three, you just counted in half five times? Yeah. Uh, so what if it was like negative 5 over negative 3? Would you count in thirds? Yeah, so I would go 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, right there. Yeah. yeah. Another way you can do it is take the numerator, divide it by the denominator, and then plot that. So negative 5 divided by 2 is negative 2.5. So you go to negative 2 and then half further towards negative 3. And that's negative 2.5. However, we're going to be doing some stuff in the next unit, maybe tomorrow or the day after, where being able to count by fractions is makes things a little easier. You're going to have to plot like negative 11 over 4. And it's nice to be able to count, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, it's negative 2.75. Okay? All right. How do we feel? Okay, so let's just recap. To find a point of intersection, you graph both lines neatly. You make a guess as to what it is. And Ian, I would suggest even if you thought it was 3.1 on yours, I would still guess 3. Right? Because it's I'm probably not going to give you something where it's like 3.05. Yeah. Right? I'm going to give you 3 or maybe 2.5. But I'm not going to give you uh, like 0.17. Like that's just too hard to estimate. Okay? So I would start by guessing integers. Another reason I would guess integers is it's really fast to do the check. And if the check is wrong, you'd go back and re-guess. Okay? Big tip, make sure you get your X's and Y's in the right order. It's always X, Y. You can't make that mistake. All right? All right, let's go back. Can somebody state what is a linear system for me, please? Just hands up. What's a linear system? Just to recap this lesson. Thank you. Benjamin. It's like two lines on a graph. Two lines. Yeah. Doesn't have to be on a graph, but in this case it was. Yeah, just it's, it's not one line. 
It's two lines. Uh, can you give me the three different cases, just very simply? Single solution, um, no solution, and infinity. Solution. An infinite number of solutions. So no one solution, no solutions, infinite number of solutions. Uh, when does one solution occur? Without looking in your notes, can we remember, when does one solution occur? Angel? Like infinitely is when the lines are like exactly the same. Okay, so infinite occurs when they are exactly the same. Same slope and same y-intercept. When does one solution occur? Simon? Um, when, they have, when two lines have different slopes. As line. soon as they have different slopes, it doesn't matter about the y-intercept. They will have one solution. Thank you, Simon. When do they have zero solutions? Um, Emma? When they're, when they're parallel with... Each other? They're parallel to each other, but what do they have to have different as well? Um, their y-intercepts y have to be different. Because if the y-intercepts are the same, it's not... They are parallel... But it's not no solutions, it's an infinite number of solutions. I feel like I'm gangsta here. Okay, sorry if I'm intimidating you. Uh, and who feels like they can find the guess graphically? Who feels like they understand the process to do that? And who feels they understand how to do the check? Here's a nice Jerome of hands. That's good. Yes? Oh, you're just putting your hand. Okay. You know, it was a late reaction. It was like a joke. It was like a, a question grenade. I asked the question, pulled the pin, threw it over, and then it took about 10 seconds. And then Muhammad was like, I'm delayed. I'm with you. Uh, we did this, the left side and right side check. Uh, so it's time for us to do some homework. Uh, in this textbook, you know, when I assign homework, I really like to use this McGraw-Hill-Ryerson Principles of Mathematics 10. It's uh, been around for a long time, but I still find it's as relevant today as it was back in uh, 2007. Uh, McGraw-Hill-Ryerson uh, doesn't exist anymore, so they can't sponsor me. But I wish they did sponsor me. Pearson, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind working for you. All right, good. All right, your choice. Uh, because we're doing this in COVID, I've made up two assignments here. Uh, we could do the long assignment or the short assignment. Is this like a trick? Does it like uh, go through the light door and the death door, but they're swapped because? Okay, sorry. Is this is this like a trick where it's like the light door and the death door, but they're like switched? So what do you think you're going There's no to death behind this. What do you think? I'm going to open it up and then you're going to take one of them and I'm going to be like, ha, 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 ha. Yes. you've fallen into my pit of despair on the first day of homework. Clementine, don't agree so, so aggressively with that. It's a possibility. You never no, they're this. both fine. Uh, <laughs> would someone like to take the responsibility for the class and pick either the long assignment or the short assignment? You do it. Benjamin, you picked the short assignment. That could be the death door. It could be a trap. One to eleven. Questions one to eleven on page seventeen. What was the longest assignment? I need to know. Yeah, I'm kind of curious too. Watch it be like three questions. Oh my god, that's a trick lesson. It so is. Dang it! I'll do it. Oh, all right. Questions of multiple parts. One, three, seven, eight AC, nine AC, and eleven. So it would be it's longer. No, it's longer. What makes it longer? How is it? They could be big. What? Like, okay, this is clearly oh the longer assignment. Oh, oh, this oh, one oh, is only 15 oh, centimeters oh, long. But this one is like, that's like 42 and a half centimeters. That's a long assignment. I knew it was a trick. I knew it was. It's a not a trick. Yes, it is. This is the long assignment. No, he's right. Well, it's a trick because we wanted to not do a lot of work. We were talking about the length <laughs> of the work. Thank you for clarifying, Brooklyn. That's the length. We had a break. I was going to call it. Uh, ten minute break, and then you can cut into it. I forgot my rules. I forgot my rules. I forgot my rules.